Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for being here today. And um, we're also grateful to the AMA, EBSCO, and the Community for Responsible Research in Business and Management for recognizing our research and providing us this platform to share this work uh, with all of you. My name is Jesse Catlin, and I'm an Associate Professor of Marketing at California State University, Sacramento. Today, I'll be talking about our article called Dangerous Double Dosing, how naive beliefs can contribute to unintentional overdose with over-the-counter drugs published in the journal of public policy and mark and marketing i'd also like to recognize my co-authors connie peshman who is a professor of marketing at uc irvine and as many of you probably already know is one of the most recognized names when it comes to marketing and public policy i'd also like to recognize eric brass who's a professor emeritus of medicine at UCLA and a leading expert on OTC drug labeling and regulatory issues. In this presentation, I'll briefly describe the article and the key findings while also discussing the dissemination of the findings to practitioners and policy makers. Our time together is short, so I'll be focusing on kind of the high level stuff, but if you have uh, questions, the paper is of course published, so there's more detail there. Um, but we're also happy to answer uh, any questions that you might have about this work um, as well. So the question then is, well, to start, what is double dosing? I'd like you to take a second to think about the last time you used an over-the-counter medication. Did you read the label before you used it? Did you or do you know what active ingredient was in the drug? If you answered yes to the last couple of questions, good for you. But if many of us are being truly honest, we might find, might find that we often overlook some of this information. The good news is most OTC drugs are quite safe and have relatively large margins of safety when it comes to overdose. However, there are certain OTC drugs where exceeding or even doubling the dose could put consumers at risk, such as in the case of acetaminophen. One way that this so-called double dosing can occur is by taking more than one medication at a time containing the same active ingredient. And this is surprisingly easy to do. Take a look at all the labels you see here on the screen. Do you know what they all have in common? Well, aside from being over-the-counter medications and some from the same brand, they all contain acetaminophen. So you could see where it might be fairly easy for a person to inadvertently or even knowingly double dose by taking more than one of these medications at the same time. So the goal of this research was to better understand why and how double dosing may occur and how differences in consumers' beliefs about OTC drugs may play a role. Next, I'll summarize some of the key results from the studies reported in the article. Since we have limited time, again, I'll be focusing kind of on kind of the high level stuff um, but happy to answer questions about more detail as desired. So in the first two studies, we found that consumers with less knowledge compared to those with medical training were less conscious of OTC drug risks and the risk of double dosing. For example, in study two, which included undergraduate psychology students or novices and nursing and medical students with pharmacology training or experts, they're shown a, we're shown a series of medication label pairs, an example of which you can see on the screen here, where the active ingredients in each drug were the same or different. In other words, if double dosing was occurring or not, and they were asked to rate the risk of taking me both medications at the same time. We were particular in, particularly interested in seeing whether risk ratings would be different when double dosing was or wasn't occurring. And what we found is that the novice group of students did not perceive any significant difference in risk when double dosing occurred versus did not, as highlighted by the red oval here. In contrast, among the expert group of medical and nursing students, risk judgments were higher when the active ingredient was the same versus when they were different, as highlighted by the red arrow. So whereas experts based risk judgments on double dosing, those with lower knowledge did not factor double dosing into their risk judgments. So what we wanted to do next was probe these differential risk beliefs further and evaluate potential interventions to help consumers better assess double dosing risk 
And we did this through a series of follow-up studies. Participants in these studies were drawn from samples of undergraduates or online panels. They were again shown a series of medication label pairs and asked to rate the risk of taking both medications at the same time, except this time around, we tested whether including additional messages on the labels would impact risk judgments in situations involving double dosing. For example, in study three, we tested an icon with a message that highlighted the active ingredient information, which you can see here on the screen, and is similar to an approach considered by the FDA and industry. And so the approach here is trying to increase the salience uh, or accessibility of the active ingredient in the medication. And what we found is that there was no effect on double dosing risk for this type of, of message or icon. In our fifth study, we tested a modified icon that mentioned the active ingredient and explicitly stated the risk of double dosing and advised against it, as you can see here. The results for this type of message were encouraging. Double dosing was rated as riskier when the message was present compared to a control condition. So the implication here is that it seems general consumers with lower knowledge may not fully grasp the potential risks of double dosing. Because of this, it may not be enough to highlight the active ingredient information alone, but instead need to go further by providing consumers with more information to help them utilize the ingredient active ingredient information more effectively. Given the theme of the AMA EBSCO award, which emphasizes the impact of the research, I'd also like to highlight examples of media coverage and dissemination to industry and practitioners, starting with some of the popular media coverage. Shown on the screen here, you can see some examples of media outlets that have mentioned the article and its findings, including popular web sources, newspapers, magazines, and even radio shows. And possibly even more importantly, the findings of this article have attracted interest from practitioners and policymakers through coverage in leading trade publications and speaking invitations that some of us have received. Uh, for example, as shown here on the screen, the article was called out by the Acetaminophen Awareness Coalition, a consortium of OTC manufacturers medical professionals and policymakers as supporting a nationwide consumer education campaign rolled out to Walmart pharmacies. And this was reported in one of the leading uh, over-the-counter drug trade uh, publications. In addition, we were invited to uh, serve as speakers and panelists to talk about this and other research on OTC drug labeling at the 2019 Consumer Healthcare Products Association Conference, whose audience included executives from major OTC manufacturers and also top policymakers at the Food and Drug Administration. And you can see a photo from that uh, conference here. And with that, I'd like to thank you all again. And I've provided my contact information here as well, if anyone would like to get in touch at a later time. Thanks again.